again my friends if you are here for the very first time and you don't already know I'm Islam Shaban with BCB's BLC programming using Twinkat 3 tutorial this is exactly where you want to be to learn more about the Twinkat 3 and how to program a big of BC-based BLC in the previous video we start learning the instructions of the structured text programming languages we already discussed the if statement and case instruction and if you missed how to create Twincat project and the basic needed knowledge for starting working with the Twincat feel free to check the previous episodes in today's episode we will discover more useful instructions we will talk about the loops instructions for while and repeat loops loops are handy if you want to run some codes over and over again each time with a different value loops are useful in some places however i do not advise using them in an excessive way also you should give them extra attention when building a loop in your code therefore if the execution time of the loop takes more than the plc cycle time or might be the worst happens and you missed adding an exit condition to your loop so it becomes an endless loop in that case your plc will switch to an error mode loops can execute a block of code several times each time with a different value often this is the case when we working with arrays so i will start by asking what is an array is an array is a collection of data elements of the same data type twincat supports one dimensional and multi-dimensional arrays of fixed or variable lenses so let's start and see how to declare an array we can declare an array like as any other data type write the variable name my array followed by a colon and his data type is array then you can specify the size of the array between two square brackets let's say we want to declare an array of size 10 elements so the lower index bound could be any number for example 1 and the upper index bound is 10 now we created an array with a size of 10 elements the only remaining step is to specify the data type of this element the data type could be any data type supported by iec 61131 standard so let's say it's double integer you can access any element of the array by specifying the index number of that element for example, in this line, assigning a value equal 10 to the third element in your array. So you can access any element of this array just by calling its index number. And this index number should be in the range of the lower and upper bound of the array declaration. So imagine you want to assign value to all the array elements the best way to do so is by using for loop let's see how to write a for loop the for loop has two parts the header and the body the header is specifying the iteration and the body which is executed once per iteration the header of the control loop not surprisingly starting with the keyword for and the header often has explicit loop counter or loop variable which allows the body to know which iteration is being executed so the first step we need to declare the for loop counter so let's declare a variable called counter in the for loop header we initialize the counter the starting value is one for loops are typically used when the number of iterations 
is known before entering the loop. For example, we want to access the 10 elements of my array variable, so we need the loop to has 10 iterations. We can explicit this by using the keyword 2 followed by the end value 10 followed by the keyword do and hit enter. The for loop body is the instructions between do and end for. This body will be executed for 10 iterations. The body could be anything, for instance, assigning a value to our array elements. So we can use the counter as the array index by writing this. Keep in mind that the default step value is 1, which is mean the counter will increase by 1 in each iteration. So let's run the code. Notice the initial value of the array elements, its value 0. But now, notice the value of the array elements has a counter value. We also can change the step value by explicit the step value by using the keyword by in the for loop header followed by the step value, let's say 2. That means the counter value will increase by 2 each iteration. Notice the value of the array elements. Only the elements with the odd index have a value. An important point. The for loop finishes its iterations, the 10 iterations, in the same scan cycle. The iteration execution doesn't distribute over the scan cycles, but it's executed in one cycle. That's why maybe you notice the value of all elements updating at the same time. And this is one of the risks of using loops. So it's important to give more attention to the execution time of all the loop iteration. It shouldn't exceed the cycle time especially if the for loop body includes a big piece of code. So that was the first type of loops, the for loop. Let's have a look at the while loop. The while loop is used to execute instructions repeatedly until the termination condition applies. The termination condition of the while loop is a Boolean expression. Okay, I know I'm using a lot of jargon here. So let's have a clear example. But first, let's commence the for loop part. The while header includes the termination condition or the while condition which is mean as long as the condition returns true, the while loop keeps repeating executing the while body between do and the end while. In this example, the termination condition is counter not equal 10. That means as long as the counter value does not equal 10, the while loop keeps running and repeating the execution of the instructions between the do and end while. And here is the tricky part. If you try to run the code as it is right now, without adding a termination condition for the loop, your PC would switch to the famous blue screen error. As in this case, the while loop becomes an infinite loop as the counter always does not equal 10. All right, then let's add an instruction to increment the counter by one each iteration of the while loop. So the counter keeps incrementing each time the while loop gets executed till its value equal 10. 
so TwinCat can exit the while loop. This piece of code is pretty much has the same function as the for loop example. So let's run the code. Notice the array elements value. This example has the same effect of the for loop example on the array elements value. Maybe you're now wondering what if we give the counter an initial value that equals 10. This means TwinCat will not execute the while loop at all. Let's try that. Notice now the while loop does not start and that's the main difference between the while loop and the repeat loop which is the third loop instruction in our video today. Repeat loop is equivalent to the do while loop in the other programming languages and it's pretty much the same as the while loop except for one difference that the twin cat does not check the termination condition until after the loop has been executed. This behavior has the consequences that the repeat loop will run at least once. So yeah, this is the time for another example. The repeat loop body is the instructions between the repeat and the until keyword. And obviously the termination condition is between the keyword until and the end repeat keyword. It's almost the same piece of code we use to demonstrate the while loop. Each time you write down a repeat instruction, give a second and look and make sure the condition line after the until does not has a semicolon. This is annoying part, I know. Anyway, back to the example. To keep the counter within the range, I will add an if statement in the repeat body to make sure that the counter will not exceed the array size. And remember, the initial value of the counter is still 10. Let's run the code. Although the termination condition is active, the repeat loop has been executed once. Notice the value of the array element number 10. And if we change back the counter to one, it will give us the same behavior of the other loops. Maybe after watching this video, you have the feeling that the loops are pretty much the same with slightly few differences. At the end, my advice is not to use loops instruction in your code extensively. And each time you use while or repeat loop, make sure that your code will not enter into an infinity loop. See you next time.